everybody. My name is Alan. On behalf of the crew, I'd like to welcome you to another edition of Bridging Heaven and Earth. This is an amazing opportunity for us all to be alive, to be in this human body, to be able to be, however you're watching this, on a television, on a tablet now, on a laptop, on a computer, through the internet, through television, through satellite. The opportunity for us to come together and to share our hearts, to share our connection to, to love, to share our connection to each other is such an extraordinary gift now and is made so available by the advances in technology. And, you know, so often advances in technology, like so many things in the third dimension, you know, something's gained and something's lost. You know, that something is positive about it and something, and the internet in a way is like that. That there's so much available now that you Google almost anything and, and information is available on almost any subject, on any topic, in, in so many ways, in so many languages. And yet that internet, that YouTube, that Vimeo, that availability all over the world to most people, if it's not in their home, it's in the Chamber of Commerce, it's in the library, it's in the, the town square, that these v videos and this information and these vibrations that we come together here in California, USA, to, to feel the love and share it, to bridge heaven and earth, to come together globally in a sense, because we know that over time millions and millions of people are, are feeling this connection, are watching these shows, are, are feeling the love and the, the healing and the commitment and the, the dedication of the, the guests and artists and uh, uh, videographers and, and healers and all the people and all the guests and all the people who turn art into the International Healing Art Project and all the people who make videos and music videos and art videos and send them in all over the world. They're all about that connection, the connection to who we really are, that connection to unconditional love. As we call it, that connection to the oneness, dedicated to the oneness. And what is that oneness? It's, it's that root, that heart of every human being, that the deepest part of what it means to be in a human body at this time and at every time is that we are connected, we are love, each one of us in that deepest root, in the heart of what we are, are infinite, are included in everything. And, and we can experience ourselves as unconditional love. And that's what all the great teachers and masters and mistresses and uh, gurus and people who had that experience, the Jesus, the Krishnas, the Buddhas of the world, when they say the Father and I are one, they're saying love and I are one, truth and I are one. And more and more people are having, if not a f the fullest experience of that, they're having more and more experience that, in fact, there is an experience that people can have that feels like the infinite, that feels like inclusiveness, that feels like unconditional love, and that everyone is part of that oneness. And in that, we can really bring this planet with all what we seem to think as seeming divisions and seeming separations and seeming countries and seeming religions and separate, 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 separate. But there is an experience at our root, at our heart, at the base of our being that we feel in the middle of the night, we feel at the beach, we feel in... in in a million times of life, but then the busyness of our life kind of pulls us away from that. But now is a time that we can really have that experience over and over and over and over again, and then come to the, tr the realization, the truth, the experience that we are one, that we are one, that we are all part of that infinite, that everyone is included. And what would be more beautiful for a human being to feel included and infinite and feel themselves as unconditional love. And what would be, as it is in a lot of times now for us, what is a bad thing, a, an uncomfortable thing, a, a, a depressing thing to feel, is that we're separate, we're finite and small.
How does that feel? How does it feel to be disconnected, to feel disconnected from something that you know is grand, that you know is incredible? How does it feel to be excluded? It feels horrible. But that's the delusion. That's the illusion that we've come to, to somehow believe in. But I can say to you now unequivocally, the time is right for us as a species, as a planet, as a global collaboration, as a global creativity, to come together as one and experience that truth, that we are in fact infinite, that we are in fact included, that we are in fact unconditional love, what we call God, that each one of us in essence is that. And again, we're allowed to come together and speak these truths and vibrate these truths. More important than the words of, of this is the vibration that we come here to Bridging Heaven and Earth, that I come and is my prayer when I put my head down to meditate. Please speak the infinite through me. Please speak the inclusiveness. Please speak, let me vibrate unconditional love. And that's what, again, the guests from all over the world come in. And that's there, that's the central point that we look for in guests. You know, they're Buddhists, they're healers, they're psychics, they're readers, authors, artists, musicians. But are they vibrating that love? Are they vibrating that inclusiveness? And tonight's guests are people who, through an interesting, let's call it, set of circumstances, have more and more and more come into that experience that that's what their life is about. To give and to serve and to share that love and feel that love and feel the infinite and vibrate that infinite and let people vibrate it through the incredible gifts that they have and their incredible uh, manifestations. Bill and Channel Gerards are inspirational healing. They're artists. They're, they have an incredible story of recovering from a tragic illness in 2005 and Bill recovered from a near-death experience and the doctors gave him little hope of survival. And he came out of the coma. After three and a half weeks of being in this coma, he couldn't walk, he couldn't talk, he had no memory, and he couldn't eat by himself. I mean, this person was, in a sense, almost not human anymore in that earthly sense. And he had to have this recovery of coming back into all this and learning how to to be part of this society, in a, first in a general way. And then he came into, during his rehab, uh, he became aware of angelic presences. And he decided that he had to, to share these presences and this, what he saw with the world. So he started creating these, these angels, these incredible angels. And then his wife, Shannon, started painting these angels and, and the story that she went through dealing with a person who couldn't walk, couldn't talk, who had no memory. I mean, think of that healing process. And then these angels started manifesting. And we have two on the show that were done for the International Healing Art Project and a third one that was done before that you'll, two you'll see on the show and one you'll have to go to the, the uh, International Healing Art Project, Heaven to Earth Art, and you'll see that. So, I mean, their story is so powerful and so inspirational. And to see their art, we have a video of uh, a lot of Bill and Shannon's art as well. So the power of that accident changing a life, that illness, that seriousness, allowing for that openness to come and that gift to come through is just an it's an another one of those amazing stories. And yet how people got to that service, how people got to that is less important. But when you see Bill and Shannon, you will feel the energy of their commitment, of their hunger to serve, to serve the love. And so it's an incredible thing. As most of you know, we usually show videos on the show. And as I said a little earlier, we're going to show a beautiful video that Bill put together with uh, Bianca from Bridging and Alan O'Day wrote the song. Uh, you know, it's an angel all Bill's Angels and this incredible mu music by Alan O'Day. And then we also, another great friend of Bridging who was a guest before, Richard Shulman, done, did a beautiful video called Remembering the Bliss. Beautiful video. And as I said, we're in the middle of an international healing art project. It came as a dream. It came as a vision. 
as a healing, as an acupuncture for the planet, that anybody, any, anybody who produced a new original piece based on the theme Bridging Heaven and Earth, any size, any format, any skill level, any age, produce a new original piece based on the theme Bridging Heaven and Earth, get it to us here in California, we'll put it on the bridging shows, we'll have art exhibits, we'll uh, have art project shows where we only show art, we'll, hopefully at some point soon we'll get them in museums and galleries and have more and more exhibits and, and oh, so far we received over 400 pieces of new original art all based on the theme Bridging Heaven and Earth. Uh, glass, stained glass, uh, fused glass, collages, uh, acrylics, oils, sculptures, uh, wood sculptures of all sizes, of all shapes, of all formats from the ages of 2 to 92. Unbelievable pieces. And tonight we're seeing two pieces that uh, Bill and Shannon have produced, these incredible healing angels that we'll hear more of that backstory with. So, you know, again, you know, as I started the show, this is a real gift and a real opportunity that allows us to be here in California and reach out to people all over the world and, and to feel that love come back to us in emails and calls and uh, statements on YouTube, statements on the Bridging website, and to know that this message is really enlivening for everyone. And we're all coming together more and more into that love, into feeling the love, sharing the love, and being brothers and sisters on this planet. And what a gift and what a blessing that is. So first join me in a short meditation, then we'll show the first beautiful uh, video that, uh, that Bill and Bianca with uh, Alan's music. And then we'll uh, have uh, Bill and Shannon and the art. And really, all these shows are about love, and that's why you're watching it. So join me in a short meditation. Thank you. So as I said, first video is Bill and Bianca uh, and uh, the Bills there, these are Bills and, and Shannon's Healing Art Angels. The music is by Alan O'Day, Angel Sculptures. Enjoy. Just a normal guy named Bill, till that morning he fell ill. They rushed him to intensive care that day When the doctors told his wife That Bill might not survive They must have been surprised to hear her say You don't know him like I do I've got faith that he'll pull through Give him every chance you can to beat the odds Yes, she stayed right by his side And when she knew that he'd survive She prayed this prayer of gratitude to God Thank you for the angels Surrounding us today Show us how we might repay And live our lives to stay got him home once more he was different than before with a vision no one really understood no artist was this man but determined in his plan he started making angels out of wood now these lovely works of art touch so many people's hearts some tell him of the healing they perceive but he won't take the praise for this is just his way of giving back the gift that he received thank you for the angels the faith that guides your hands you're a living story of God's miracle of love Thank you for the angels. 
Welcome back. So that was a beautiful video put together by Bill and Bianca, Angel Sculptures, and the music, obviously, that one was day, beautiful music. Welcome. Welcome. It's Thank so you. fun to have you guys here. <laughs> it was wonderful to be here. It really it's is. great to be here. So the incredible angel you see in between uh, Bill Shannon and I is an angel that they did just recently uh, called the Angel of Peace. Why don't you talk to that a little and you know how it came to be and what your plans are and all. This is an angel of peace. It's made of 74 individual pieces. Um, the, the concept of this angel is there's just not enough love in the world. There's not enough peace in the world. Everything kind of feels disjointed to me. So when I was praying about it and getting ready to make my next angel, this is the one that came to me. It's, uh, it's near and dear to me. We're going to start a project where we are going to get a Kickstarter started to fund these angels to give to every governor of every state in the United States over the next year. Wow, and it's lovely. our way to give back for all the things that we've received to give back to help the planet. You know, and I can't think of a better place to start than right here in the United States. Yeah, I told you when I saw this one, somehow there was like a depth to it. I mean, I've seen a lot of your pieces. Yeah. I love a lot of them. But this one, I really, and when we first saw this one was just a couple of days ago. Right, right. You know, I said, well, let's put this one on first. I really felt the connection to this one. You know, there's a kindness in, in the actual angel, you know, to be protecting, you know, the, the, with her hands, just protecting our, our earth. You know, it's not just the United States earth. It's, it's all of our earth. And it's important that, that we bring that peace from here and spread it to the world and spread, instead of going out to, to the chaos. If we can just channel that into peace and love and harmony here in the United States, I think we have a better chance of making a difference in the world. And that is how I manifest it right there. Yeah, it's beautiful. Shannon did all the color. I don't know if you can <laughs> see it in the cameras. I think you can because, you know, the way our incredible camera people are, but the, it's so glowy and shiny and beautiful. <laughs> it is. I mean, Shannon, I was going to ask you after the show how you made all that glitter and all that shiny. It's amazing. So, Shannon, why don't you talk a little, I mean, at the open, I mentioned a little about the, the event, the incredible coma, the incredible illness that Bill came out of and then, you know, just came into this and... You know, the rest, in a way, is history of making these incredible <laughs> angels and you make it. But why don't you talk to that okay. and your experience of that a little? Um, we got married in September of 2005, and Bill had a little bit of a cold. And like all men, don't want to go to the doctor and get it taken care of. But um, on November of 2005, the day after Thanksgiving, one of his lungs collapsed. But we didn't realize that he was just suffering from great pain. So I called the ambulance, and I met them at the emergency room. And when I got there to the emergency room, I saw that his oxygen level was at an 83. And I knew right then and there there was something wrong. And he was kind of delusional. He kind of in and out. And the doctor said, well, his lung collapsed. He's got pneumonia. But we're going to put him up in ICU, and he should be fine in a couple of days. And so I came back Not the next so day, and it progressively got worse. He was extremely cranky. He, couldn't breathe, he couldn't sit up, he, he couldn't do anything. And so I told him that I loved him, that the nurses were having their shift change, I needed to go. And the next day I went in and they had intubated him with a tube because he no longer could breathe at all, he was suffocating. And right then and there I knew that when people say it can be your last words, it can truly be your last words. So 
at the hospital at CMH in Ventura, they, the nurses were amazing. They took care of him, they talked to him, they let me bring pictures in, I mean, they let me sleep there when they weren't supposed to, and about three weeks in, about five doctors called me in. A, this was three weeks after a coma? Yeah, yeah. I was still in, in the, the coma. Middle. Was in the mm -hmm. coma, okay, good. And about five doctors called me in. There was a cardiologist, there was a psychiatrist, a general practitioner, and I can't remember what the other two doctors were. A pulmonary, I think, was one. And then they sat me down and they explained that his condition was so bad that it had progressed to bacterial sepsis of the blood and ARDS, acute respiratory distress syndrome, where your lungs crystallize and they can't move any longer on their own. So they said that they would have to turn off the machine and we'd have to let him go. And instead of getting really sad and agreeing with the doctors, I got really mad. And I said, you're good men, but you're not God, and he's going to get up and walk out of this hospital. And I went straight down to HR. <laughs> and from then on, you know, it was my way or the highway. And I think it was two or three days later, and he woke And internally you knew, in a sense, that Bill had something that you two had something to do and some kind of yes. healing and some kind of destiny that his time was not up, even though it looked like it in a, I know. In a human <laughs> sense, but this was not how it was going to end up. Well, and if I can jump in, she's very stubborn. <laughs> <laughs> she wasn't about to just take their word for it. And, and I know a lot of people will kind of thumb their nose at this, but he is my true love, and I knew it from the moment I met him, and I wasn't going to let that go. I wasn't going to let this defeat me. I didn't call his family. I didn't tell a single soul. I just went home, prepared for Christmas, and then went back to the hospital. And three days later, I get a call from a nurse. I thought I was having a dream. She goes, your husband's awake. He wants to see you. And I thought I had gone crazy. So I rush down there. I run up. And they had just taken the tube out. And he's sitting around dazed looking at me, not knowing he didn't know who I was or where he was or who he was. And then that's when the journey really began, was teaching him how to walk, how to eat, how to talk, wow. being yeah. on oxygen, and not having any memory. And after seven therapists and two psychologists, no, two psychiatrists and seven therapists, they still don't know what's wrong and why he won't regain his memory. What was interesting is, once I could talk, they had a psychologist, I think it was a psychologist, who would come in every day and he's like, who are you? And I'd be like, Mary? He's like, nope, you're Bill, and where do you live? And I'd be like, Portland? He's like, no, you live in Ventura. And he'd come in every day. And it, it was frustrating for me, but it was frustrating for him. You could almost feel it. And one day he came in and he said, do you know anything at all? And Shannon was there, and I said, I know that girl because I married her, but I just don't know her name. So, really? You knew that? That was I the knew, one thing That I was knew. the one thing I knew. Wow. So, she so the rest me, of your mind was blank, but and, you remembered that's she, right. this woman, not necessarily <laughs> Shannon. That, <was, laughs> that was too tricky. But, <laughs> yes. but this energy, this woman. Yes. Wow, yeah, you know, amazing. and that's, I think that's what it was, that, that connection of the, of the souls more right. than... More, more yeah, than more right. the ideas. Exactly. Of, and... Uh, she actually put me back with my life because I still have no real life memories. I don't remember growing up. I don't remember much before the coma. The only memories I have are what people tell me, and then I manifest that memory. So I don't even know if it's a real memory. So like I, the rest of us yeah, out here, but, but yours is more. <laughs> it's a little more, a little more right, crystal like clear. Right, yeah, very yeah. clear. The rest yeah. of us kind of stumbling. <laughs> yeah. Wow. So so it was really remarkable. I have a. A beautiful daughter who's how old now? 35. 35 years old. A and grandson I have, that's 19. Yeah. So I got all kinds of family. But without Shannon directing me back into my life, I would not have known the people that meant the most to me. So for me, not only is the story about the miracle of healing and all that, but it's a story of love for me because had Shannon just said, you're the doctors, you know, you know better than I do, but I think it was the love that she had and, and the, you know, the respect for who I was as a person um, that really is, is the true story. That's really where it starts. You know, and from there, you know, we've had 
the ability, I woke up with the ability to create angels. And you had never been an artist before no. that anyone knows of. <laughs> no. Before, not this lifetime, <laughs> not this family. Not, but before that, I was a customer service manager for, for large companies, you know, and that's all I did was technical support, computers. Now I'm like a chimp. I can't do anything on a computer, but I go into my workroom and I put my hands up and I say, today is going to be a day for beautiful angels. And here you go. Every day. Amazing. It is. And so, so talk, talk a little, I mentioned at the opening, that all of a sudden you started seeing angelic presences and, you know, then you got the, the vision, the dream, that I'm supposed to not only see them, but make everybody be able to see them, create them and do this incredible wood sculpture art and healing and Shannon was going to paint them. And it was a very interesting thing. When I realized I couldn't go back to work, because I couldn't drive anywhere alone, and I still can't drive anywhere alone, I get lost. Shannon said, could you do one thing for me? I know you can't do much, but could you go in and make sure our boys are asleep at night because our boys are afraid of the dark like most little kids? So every night I would go in and make sure that they were asleep before I went to bed. And I went in one night and there was an angel holding my son. So I went and woke Shannon up, I'm like, hey, there's an angel in the boys' room, and she's like, honey, there's right. no angel in the boys' room. Should I call the psychiatrist? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> she's like, the I don't really trust that much. But, right. She said, you know, the doctor said you were going to hallucinate. I said, I'm telling you what I saw. So we went and turned the light on, and right. there was no angel there, right. obviously. Right. So the next day at breakfast, she's like, so what are you going to do today? I said, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to make angels. And she lovingly grabbed my hand and said, honey, you forgot so much about your life, but let me just explain this to you. You have no talent. <laughs> I'm like, really? How can that be? I'm How a can that be? <laughs> no talent at all. Right. With love. I mean, that, you, you think that's a limitation? <laughs> <laughs> no. And I, no talent. I said, you know what? That may be, but I know I can do this. And a friend of ours stopped by that very day with a scroll saw. And she's like, Bill, do you want this scroll saw? I'm like, yeah. And I'm Shannon's like, no, like no. don't give him <laughs> anything. Don't cut himself. He'll, yep. he'll be bleeding. I'll... Yep. And she said, do you know how many times you've been hurt with power tools? And I said, Shannon, I don't know anything. Right. I'm, I'm a completely new person. I'm a new person. It's a blank slate. So no, I don't. And I know I can do this. And I started cutting pieces that were scattered all over our house. and Hot glue all over our hardwood floor. Yeah, I glued things to the couch. I'm like, I don't really know what I'm doing. But <laughs> after a couple of weeks, I had, he, a, I had a new angel. When he did it, it still to this day, it makes me want to cry. I knew. I knew so you remembered so that first angel, oh. the process of it. And, and at some point you said, this is a, another miracle. Kind yeah. Of. yeah. It, it was, um, it's amazing, it's beautiful. It's, she's still the most beautiful one he's ever made. Wow. Yeah, she was wow. pretty spectacular. <laughs> wow. And, and you didn't paint that one. That one just came out with the wood, like the, it, the original one he did for the art project. Right. Yeah. That I love. It's stained. Yeah. It's stained, but it's not painted. Yep. Yeah. As that was how the yes. first one was. Yeah. I remember the, the beginning ones were not painted. They were all stained. They were all just stained. Right? At the time, she, at the time I was making them, Shannon was working, so... It, she didn't. She didn't paint the angels, and I did it. And I'm, I was so lost in what I was doing, I didn't even think about color or anything. Because as it turns out, I'm a little bit colorblind. <laughs> little, Just little. a little. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <Yeah. laughs> right. Exactly. Yeah. But you know it's pretty. I'll I know it's beautiful. Right. I know it's beautiful. Right. You know, and it's more than just the beauty of it. Right. Like when I hold it, I feel uh, different. Like they make me feel different. And I think we make. How many now? Over 120 different designs. Yeah, over 120 different types, and each one of them feels precious and special and different, and I get a, a different sense of what they are. Even though I make them, I forget after a week, my memory's blank again. So when I see them, I'm like, oh, my God, that's that's beautiful. And it, it's, it's a very... Um, yeah, it's very surreal. It, it is. It, yeah. It's very surreal. My whole life's right pretty now. Surreal. It's very surreal yeah. for sure. Yeah. So, in other words, like in your life, you almost had to come to ground zero, and almost start again. Yes. No memory, like you're saying, and, and no conception of 
what you're capable of, what you're not capable of. Right. It's like, if it's coming through me, somehow it's going to be. It's, it's got to be right, you know. And, right. and I think that that's, as people, I think that's one of the things that we, um, it's one of the things that we do to ourselves that we, that we should not, and that's limit our own abilities. Because, you know, the truth of the matter is it's easy to look around and say, I can't do what someone else does. Because it's way easier to do that than it is to try to do something that that means something to you. And for me, all that was erased, and now I live pretty much in about a 15-minute window of of now, of present. You know, like whatever I think I can do, I can do. Him doing the angels has taught me that everyone has talent. Everybody can do anything. It's just really whether or not you're going to stop yourself from doing it. Yeah, we talk a lot on the show. About whatever you think you are, you're more. Exactly. <laughs> so, you know, whatever you, you think you are, you're <laughs> yeah. more. So once we get into a cons- an idea of ourselves, it just that's limiting unto itself because we're so yeah. grand and so powerful and so talented that we, you know, we don't even know. But given the chance and given the opportunity, these incredible gifts just start, you know, just exploding out of us. Yes. You know, and I, and I really think that part of it. The biggest part of it is that it's from your heart, because if, if people do things with the intention of, I'm going to be rich, I'm going to be um, recognizable, famous. I'm going to be famous, right. you, may, you may achieve all those things, but if that's, your, if that's your thought going into it, you're not going to be happy when you get there either. You know, it's got to be from the heart. It's got to be meaningful to you. It can't just be about the physical, you know, I can buy a new car, of course we all need to pay our bills, and I get that, but there's a, there's a love that you have to have in what you do and who you are that really balances the rest of the world around you, because people meet me, they don't know that I don't have any memory, because I'm balanced, I'm balanced about what I do, I'm not, there's no ego about it, I love what I do, I'm thankful every day for what I do, and you know, my mission is to bring love and peace to the world, and I believe that I can do that through my art. That's beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> no, really. No, and, and, you know, we talk a lot. I mean, you know, you saw the first show about mm-hmm. service. Yes. And how you know, what you're describing is, in essence, the way I would describe service. That, you know, you're passionate, but it's, it's for the greater good. Yes. You know, so whatever skills are, you know, when we talk about bridging, I mean, people coming together. Everyone here is a volunteer to, to serve the love. Right. You yes. know? And, and you, that's the energy. I mean, sometimes it takes a long time to set up and the audio and all that. But ultimately, it's that service, you know, that you feel like it just feels much more in line with who you are. Exactly. And, you know, having been here today with you and looking at your incredible crew of volunteers, like you said, and you can feel much more than just the cameras. It's not just a show. It means something to every person here. And that's the brilliance of this show and They're this project. They're devoting a part of their love to this. And it yeah, comes right. through. Yeah, right. It feels like service. And yeah. that's, like, like, that's the incredible gift. And, and that's when I hear you talk about it. You know, we use different words just because we use different words. But, you know, really when you were describing it, I was like, that was a beautiful way to describe service. Which, Thank you. You know, and... We're very fortunate. We're fortunate to be alive. We should be. Our lives are precious and they're meaningful. And if you stop yourself from that preciousness and you put up the things that stop you from helping others, then you are the one who isolates yourself. And if we just embrace the world around us, it's a beautiful place. It's a beautiful place. Well, on that note, on a beautiful place, beautiful place <laughs> maybe what we'll do is do the, the second video, which is a beautiful music video by Richard Shulman, uh, Remembering the Bliss, and then we'll come back and we'll see the second unbelievable, the meditation angel, Wonderful. and we'll have more time with you know both of you guys. So Terrific. it's Richard Shulman, beautiful piece, uh, Remembering the Bliss, enjoy. <laughs> We are going to conclude the first half of the concert with a piece called Remembering the Bliss.
everybody, welcome back. So that was a beautiful music video. Richard Shulman, extraordinarily gifted, talented, all about serving the love, beautiful person. His website's Rich Heart Music, Rich, R-I-C-H, Heart, H-E-A-R-T, music.com. And, and uh, Richard was a bridging guest on show 219. So if you're interested in seeing more of Richard's music and just getting a feel for how beautiful and you know, dedicated he is to, to service, go to Bridging Show uh, 219, either from the Bridging website, heaventoearth.com, or YouTube, or Vimeo. Richard Shulman, Bridging Heaven Earth, show number 219. And the incredible piece of art you're seeing in between us now is the Meditation Angel. So why don't you talk a little about that, Bill? This is an angel of meditation. Each of my angels have, has a purpose. Some of them are to bring healing. Some of them are to bring inner peace. This is a, an angel of meditation who holds a little clay flower. She's made up of 58 pieces, and one of the few angels that I make that actually has a face. Um, we had gone through a time where I was having a difficulty concentrating on my work. Normally, I go in and they just fall out of my hands. I was having a difficulty maintaining that. I went in and I was sitting in my room, my work room, getting ready, and I just could not get motivated. Shannon came in and said, you know, maybe you should meditate. And like a burst of flame, I'm like, I know what I'm doing next. And this wow. is the angel that popped out of that. Wow. Yeah. Once again, Shannon with a good idea. <laughs> She's right there, I'll tell you. Right, that's amazing. Yeah. So we're all holding these beautiful, smaller angels, yes. which is like a new vision, a new concept, a new dream. Why don't you talk a little about how this came to be? Was it your idea again, Shannon? No, no. <laughs> it was your children's, right? <laughs> it was my son, Colin, right. one of my twins. And he went in one day to Bill's work room, and he's all, Dad, Dad, I, I want to make a small angel. And he drew one out, and I was like, you're going to get hurt on the saw, and he goes, please, please. And he's 13. He's 13, 13 now. Yeah, right, right. And so they did it together, and they came out with this little adorable angel that fits in your palm, and it just, I'm so enamored with him. And I told Bill, I said, there are so many children and so many adults in the world that suffer from cancer, and they have to sit in those chairs and take that chemotherapy and some of them are alone. They, they don't have anybody. But if they have something to hold or something to meditate with or something just tangible to look at that's bigger than what they are, it might help them get through the experience. So a friend of ours, Laura, heard about our story, and she wants to help us fund this program where every time someone purchases an angel, it gets written on the back who it's from, and then we donate it to the hospital to someone who has cancer. No matter and, if they're and this size, this these, be this these, size. Little, these little ones. Yeah. Yes, and and the point is, is we've been dealing with hospice, and we have a few people that are customers that have cancer, that have given us amazing, amazing stories. Amazing stories. Things where tumors have shrank, where they feel better, they have energy, they can get up out of bed. You know, we've had friends with breast cancer that it's now gone. We have an 84-year-old friend named Barbara who lives in Ventura, and she said she had to have one, and the tumor shrank. And, 40% in a month. And oh. we're, we're just in awe to be a part of just this tiny, we're just a tiny little dot in all of it, but just the fact that we can be a part of anything like that is, is absolutely amazing. It fuels us to keep going. <laughs> so you put these together as well, and these are obviously less pieces and just... Right. So you can make really a lot of these. I can quick. make a lot of them, yeah. You know, and, and that's really the brilliance of these is, you know, it's difficult for people to afford larger angels, and you can't really take that with you places. These are really comforting. Um, we get letters from people all the time who have these that go in for medical operations and they take these angels to hold and they say that it brings them great peace. It gives them a, I think what it does is it gives them a focus as opposed to being in this cold room with these bright lights, you know, and they hold these things and it, it somehow connects their soul back to themselves because it's a scary thing to be in a hospital. I know, <laughs> you know, if anyone knows, I know. and you know, the tenderness that people have within them, because we all have it, 
sometimes just needs a catalyst, and that's what these are, the catalyst for that. Well, also, I mean, when you guys are talking, I mean, you can feel the love that goes into everyone. Yeah. So, I mean, that's also what they're feeling is your, you know, we talk so much on the show and in the opening about the dedication to, to feeling love and sharing it. And so each time we can imbue something with that intention and that love yes. and that energy, yeah. it just goes out all over the world for somebody to have it, you know, in their palm. And every piece you put together like this that has that, that love, that intention of love, that actual love, the... It's just, it's a game it's changer. An enormous, yeah, it's, it's a game enormous changer. Thing. And we whether were, it heals tumors or, it, it, it's hard to say. It's hard it's to say. Is, right. You know, but you know, I think inside each of us, we, you know, we have the, the ability to manipulate our own health and our own uh, vibration as well. So if it, if it allows someone to change internally, you know, a lot of healings come from that. We were at lunch not too long ago and we were at the table next to us, there was these three ladies, and they were real nice and everything, but one of them was just kind of quiet, and she was saying, you know, I just, you know, life seems lackluster to me. And one of the ladies that was with her reached in her purse and pulled out one of these <laughs> and angels. And you were just sitting there We were just random. sitting. I, I, we don't like, even know them. like there were flies on the wall. It's like that you is, got to actually was, see it. That is an amazing It was magic, and she handed it to her, and she said, take this with you, and you will feel better. And boy, I'll tell you what, we had ourselves a day. We went to the and beach that's a and story we laughed. You remember. Yeah, that's a story I remember. Yeah. That breaks the 15 minute barrier. <laughs> yes, it does. Right, that's interesting how you that know, works. Yeah. It's funny, you know, I, I tell a lot of the same stories again. I'm not sure if I ever shared this with you. This woman came into the Angel Store in Ventura, and it was the 4th of July a couple of years ago. And she was like maybe 80 years old and she was about this tall and just as mean as a rattlesnake. <laughs> She's like, you make angels. I said, yeah, I do. She goes, well, I have a problem in my chest and I bought your angel and my chest still hurts. And I'm like, hey, they don't really, I come. Didn't there's no, <laughs> they don't really come with a guarantee right. now. <laughs> yeah. And you're on a any of And she said, well, that's not the story. My son is homeless. He does drugs, he drinks, and every month he comes I live alone and I need his help, but he won't move in because he wants to be a drunk and he wants to live in the park. But every month he comes to my house and I give him part of my money. And I know what he does with it, but he's my son and I just do. And I said, you know, as a parent, I get that. She said, well, he came and I showed him the angel and I said, my chest has been feeling bad. And he looked at the angel and he's like, well, you know, mom, I hope you feel better and handed it back to her. And she said, three days later, he called me and said, when he was holding your angel, it spoke to him. He checked himself into a rehab, went through rehab, and moved in with her. And it was wow. just such a powerful story. We ended up crying and hugging her. I thought I was going to break her in half. She was, <laughs> she was so small. But it was such a touching story that, you know, I think inside each of us, we know what we want to be. And sometimes you just need the catalyst to get you there to get you there. Because I've been making them a long time and they don't talk to me. But if it if it talked to him, if it somehow changed his heart, and it did change his heart, and it changed both of our lives, and to be just this much of that, it, I can't Amazing. think of anything more rewarding. Yeah, I mean, that's why, you know, at the opening, and I talk a lot about how blessed and fortunate that, you know, we feel to be able to you know, do these shows with people like right. you and people coming from all over the world. And now the art project with all these 400 some odd pieces. And another 600 or so that haven't manifested it yet. You know, they, they intend to do it and they're on the website on the artist page. But over 450 have already been manifested. I mean, it's like... If you have not been to the website, you need to go. You know, it, is to earth art, it is spectacular. <laughs> spectacular. And incredibly designed. And everyone's represented on the homepage from the two-year-old to the 92-year-old, from the world-famous artist to, you know, somebody who picked up Sharpie markers and... <laughs> You know, just was it's, wanting to, to be part of that. It's about the, that's right. It's about the inclusion. It's about the love. It's about the participation that, that we should all feel. We should all feel that, and we should all strive for that, and we should teach our children that. And, you know, to be a part of something bigger, and the earth is a big place, 
so often we're isolationists. We stay in our home, we get in our car, we drive to the store, we go back yeah, to our home. Yeah, now with the tablets, we, even if we're outside, yeah, exactly. we don't really have to ever look <laughs> up. No one ever looks up <laughs> right. anymore. You, know, you so, have eyes. <laughs> so to teach that, to teach that, you know, you are part of something bigger. You know, and you can, you know, you can choose to be yourself. You can choose to be alone. But at the end of all that, you've not really... You've not done yourself a favor and you've not helped the world. And those are the two things that go hand in hand. Because if you do one, the other automatically happens. Right. And I believe that with my heart. You know, yeah, why don't you talk about, I mean, we talk about it a lot, that the best feeling is when we do what you've been describing or I describe as service. When you're feeling that kind of energy and that intention in you, there's nothing more healing for the human body. There's nothing more. So why don't you, I know you well, feel that. So. Well, one of the gifts actually Bill gave me, which I don't think he realizes, is that I didn't know I could paint like that. So he gave me a feeling, a joy inside of me that I didn't know existed. And just, you know, that joy spreads to my children. It spreads to other people. You know, just, just to be a part, a little part of it all, I, I'm just in awe. I'm just in awe. I, I I know I touch people. Sometimes I touch them and I don't even know. Well, like but, that in the restaurant. Yeah, it's, right. It's happening. It's happening all over. Right. I mean, you know there's a lot of angels out. Exactly. So you're touching a lot of people. And, and you right. know, after the illness, it was very difficult. We, we lost our house. We lost our car. And here we're thinking it'll never be good again. But those are things. And things can be replaced. And if we... If he didn't receive that saw and if he didn't listen to his heart, we wouldn't be here right now. And we would That's not true. be happy and joyful. We would be doing that nine to five gr grind in a car, hating life, hating everything. But instead, we're bringing just a little bit more love and peace to the world and a little bit less anger. And I'm really honored to be a part of that. And I have to tell you, not having any memory, I wake up really happy every day. Uh, you know, I live in the moment. Um, it, it's a, I don't have any grudges. I don't have any, I don't have the baggage that we all accumulate over the years of life. You know, you, you leave some wreckage behind you that that's an imprint on you as well. Other people are hurt, but so are you. And for me, all that was erased with the coma. Because when I tell people I was in a coma, they're all like, oh, I'm so sorry. I'm like, don't be, trust me. It is, it's a blessed life when you can wake up every day and embrace the world and be happy about whatever's going to happen today. We don't think this probably isn't the way we're, we were raised, but we really don't even think about the future in our home. We just no. really live in the moment. We you know, know it's going to happen. Yeah. We know that we will, we will always have whatever we need. But the thing that's most important is I've always wanted my boys to know how love can change everything. And I believe love changed him. I believe that love changed me, but it, it also kept us together. And, uh, and kept him alive. Yeah. <laughs> in a body. We, were we don't want him coming back as a little... <laughs> we, were, uh, <laughs> we, we were talking to a women's group not too long ago, and you know, I was telling them my story, and Shannon was sitting next to me, and uh, we were talking about the doctor saying, you know, he's, he's gone, and Shannon just really sweetly just says, well, you know, I told the doctors he can die when I'm through with him, and I'm not through with him. Right. He's <laughs> got think, more to do here. He's this, got more to do. Young man here. <laughs> you know, so love is really, at the core of every religion, it's all the same. At the, you know, a spiritualism, all of it, it all comes down to love. Love of self, love of, of others, love of the world, and those are the things that, that I think every piece I do brings some sort of healing, some sort of, if nothing else, just for me, because at the end of it, my life seems the best life in the world. And if everybody can have that, you know, I know a lot of people who look at other people with money and they're like, that would be the best life in the world, but it's not. You know, it's when you can love yourself and you can make a difference in your life and the life of the people around you, then you're making a difference around the planet. I believe that 
It's it's my core. It's what gets me up every day. Would you stop the defining service and everything? <laughs> and you know, I never I heard just used the word service, and here's a poet <laughs> speaking about it. And really, but I mean, you know what I'm saying? It's I mean, true. And and really, that's such an important thing now, because there's so much time and attention that we have in a life. If we're not doing stuff that we're really passionate about and dedicated, and you know, feeling is serving that, it just yes. feels like. You know, we're grinding it out. Yeah, and that, and that that's, feels horrible. That's a horrible life. You know, yeah. I mean, it, it's 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 not healthy. I don't think that's the way we were born to be. I think we were born to be communicative, joyous. with joyous. You know, to to actually, you know, when you're born as a baby, you don't you don't hate anyone. You don't have any fear. You're you're a little kid. Yeah, you're not separate. You're, you're not, not a separate country. And that's separate, right. right. You don't even know where you live. I mean, you're you're on the earth like the rest of us and you know over time we get so caught up in what we think is right and other people's opinion and our opinion of them and you know once all that was taken away from me i i just don't really have anything bad you know, to say about anybody but the more you guys talk about it, it's like that you became childlike which yeah, is what is. not childish but childlike. childlike and you know that's in a way what everybody really wants to become to to be in that awe and wonder yeah. Of this life because it's un it's unbelievable a tree, it, it uh, is an ant. Uh, it you is. know it's unbelievable. But if we build up a whole story that we've seen it before, you know. But you haven't seen anything before. Shannon bought me a bird feeder because I used to make uh, these in a shed in my backyard, and I called her one day. I'm like, you're not going to believe what just happened. She's like, what's that? I said, there's these birds eating out of the feeder, and she's like, yeah. That's what a bird feeder like, is for. <laughs> I'm right, like, but right, you, like you don't connected. get it. Like, right. like there's amazing. a bird on that feeder, right. and you know, it was such an, an incredible moment for me. I remember it clearly, and actually, that same bird hung around our yard long enough that I learned how to feed him peanuts out of my hand. I've done that with blue birds. It was a blue jay. Amazing. Yeah, blue jay. And you, you, that's where my blue jay went. <laughs> <laughs> I've been looking for that blue jay for quite no, he used to eat he's peanuts safe and out he's of my sweet. Yeah. Oh, okay, good. Yeah. Well if he's with a good home, I was glad he didn't get <laughs> a hawk or anything like that. We even named him Chuck. We named him Chuck, <laughs> just so that's you know. Uh, that's a beautiful story. You know, it's amazing, but we're actually coming to the end of this hour. And it's been it's a such a hour. joy. It's really, I mean, and to have, you know, these beautiful energies, angels sitting in between us. Be it's an honor. We've enjoyed our time with you. It's been wonderful, and you know, I hope that other people can can embrace that. The more love you give, the more love you get, and it changes all of us. Amen to that. Amen. Any information about Bill, Shannon, the Angels, Alan, 805-687-2053, 805-687-2053. It's about the love. Good night. God bless you. We love you. God Thank bless. you. God bless.